Hello everybody, welcome back to Sky Saga Alpha 4.5. We are here on my home island and it is time for another episode. So as some of you may know, if you've been keeping up with Sky Saga on all of their social media, we're actually getting really, really close now to the end of Alpha 4.5 and moving over to Alpha 5 itself. And I have to say, having seen some of the streams and other promotional stuff that they've been doing, there's going to be a lot of cool things coming up in Alpha 5. So, this does mean that I may end up uh, stopping with videos for a little while, just as we swap over between the two. And I may also get a little bit of access to Alpha 5 before the full release that I won't actually be able to show video of. So, if all that type of thing happens, I will probably end up putting up some other videos on the channel, maybe even jumping back over and doing a little bit of modded Minecraft. Uh, that type of stuff I used to do a lot of before Sky Saga came along. Of course, I didn't uh, produce videos back in those days, but I've recently been getting back into modded Minecraft with the Hermitcraft mod source pack that has just been released. So. If there is a bit of a lull in my video production here for Sky Saga, I might go back over there and do some tutorials and a few other bits and pieces on the Hermitcraft mod pack. Because that thing is really cool and there are some really, really awesome things that you can do in there. So, not much has really been done since the last episode. As you can see, everything is still pretty much the same as I left it. I have decided to leave all of the fire pits and brazes in, even with this collar bug. I actually kind of like it. It means that every time you move through this place and you kind of come away and come back again, everything changes around and it, it feels a little bit more like it's actually a natural lava flow system that's happening underneath all of these floors and up there in the the actual lava flow itself. It, it gives it a bit of a, a dynamic feel, I guess, is uh, what I'm trying to say here. So this episode, uh, we're going to look at kind of rounding this island out a little bit, because as I say, I don't really know how many more episodes I've got before Alpha 5 comes out. Um, and like I said, I may end up getting pre-access to Alpha 5, and if that happens, then the progress here in Alpha 4.5 is definitely going to slow to a crawl. So today what I really want to do is I want to close in this portal area, so I want to fill out this back wall, probably fill all of this in with clay and gravel and some kind of weird pattern at the back here to form a wall, move all of my crafting and storage out into tunneled rooms, potentially build up a little bit of a jail, but I don't know, we'll see if we have time for that, and then build something roof-like over the top of this thing and fill the top section up there with lava. So, it's got a, you know, a few little bits and pieces that I want to do today. Hopefully it should make for quite an interesting episode. The other thing I do want to get done today as well is to tunnel my way this way through, probably in through this section, maybe move this torch, put that somewhere else. And then I want to, yeah, tunnel my way in through here and head out over towards the entrance here, which goes up to the tutorial island, because... Basically, at this point in time, my entrance to the tutorial island is literally just jumping down a hole onto the pre-made staircase that I built way, way, way back when the island wasn't made completely of clay. So yeah, this is this is the entrance here. You just jump down there onto that staircase and follow that staircase all the way down and out. So obviously that needs to be upgraded a little bit. Um, I do want to be able to get in and out without having to just like jump off the top into the void and get teleported back. So... That's the other plan for today. I think we'll start with that, actually. We'll start with that little piece of tunneling that we need to do. So I'm going to get these pickaxes out, and we can start on that tunnel there and pull that tunnel all the way out over. So the basic outline of the cave is now done. Here we are out on the actual staircase that leads all the way down across to the tutorial island there. But then if I jump up here, you can see I've got a nice little kind of platform, clay platform out here. Need to rough this around the edges a little bit more, I think. It doesn't quite feel quite right, but I'm not sure. I mean, this is also, you know, you're going to see the kind of curve of the above clay pad as well as you go through here. So, then the actual cave itself. So, there are actually two ways to get through here, but I mean, that's literally just this end part. You can go straight out or you can go around, basically. And then this is 
been done pretty much the same way that I did the last tunnel, uh, the, the tunnel in through there that's all covered in red. I was basically just kind of clicking with my pickaxes and any block that got taken out got taken out. I mean, every now and again you kind of focus up a little bit and create pillars or create areas that you think look good. So, you know, like this little pillar here was actually forcefully created, but everything else is just kind of double clicking with the pickaxe and swinging around and, you know, basically taking out as many blocks as you can and still leaving this kind of cave type structure set up. So this is the, the cave. Obviously I've got a few torches and bits and pieces around here. It's really not all that long. So here's the the main area in here that's you know all lit up and ready to go. And then this cave itself is really quite short. You go in here around this part and there you are. You're outside and ready to go over to the tutorial island, which is perfect. I might end up even uh, cocooning this thing and just like creating a little bit of a dome of clay here or creating a, a kind of mini cave of clay. I'm not really sure, but I mean, with Alpha 5 coming up very, very soon, that type of detail work is, I just don't have time for it realistically. If I had another month or a couple of months, I might end up doing detail work quite like that. But for now, I think it's better just to move on and do the other things that I really, really need to get done. So it's time to put some lighting into the floor of this thing and done so this place now has just a few little smoke areas in it so i haven't really gone too overboard i think we've only put down four of these things in total so there's two out the back here i really like this one coming up through the double pillar i think it looks really good and then we've got one over here in the corner and then yeah two out this side as well so i think that works really well i didn't really want to overdo it i still wanted that kind of dark and gloomy feel to this place and then Obviously it still comes out here correctly and joins up to what it needs to. So that's it, that is uh, this little project done now. So I really like this uh, caving style and I'm probably going to end up using this for the back half of the build as well. So when we go back out here, we're going to build up this wall out the back and then what I want to do is I want to dig off some tunnels down the side. So the tunnel off down this side, we're going to go out and a little bit this way and we're going to connect up to a crafting area and then we're going to go out and a little bit that way and we're going to have a big storage area. And then over the other side is where I wanted to do a kind of jail or a prison type thing. So if we go out here, we'll end up with, you know, some blindstone brick type looking things and then we'll have uh, cell bars and all that kind of stuff all in this side here. And then the rest of this back half here, I really just kind of want to block this off and not really touch it or use it too much because to try and turn this area that has been very built up for a long time back into a natural area, it's going to take a lot of work. And as you can see out the back here, there's not actually a lot of natural stone in behind these walls either. So a lot of this stuff out the back would have to be left as gravel or as clay and I'm not really keen on having too much of that in the build so like I said I think we'll stick to using out this side and out the other side for the time being I might end up doing something small out through the back here but it will be just something small or I might even move the jail out back here because the jail is going to be built out of brick textured items because it's supposed to be you know big and sturdy and holding prisoners and all that kind of stuff so that's the plan for now, um, so I think the next thing to do is collect up a whole bunch of clay again and start doing this around the, the front here. I also want to get in here and change all of this sand out for clay. I did mention that a little while ago that I wanted to do that for all of the, the sand up through the ceilings in here as well. But I'm thinking that for now, especially as you can't really see the sand too often when you're actually in here without a torch, I think I'm going to leave it and just let it be. But out here where you will be able to see the sand, I do want to remove it and place some clay and some gravel up in there. So I'm going to grab all that stuff out and we're going to start building this place up, making it look a little bit better. And now we have a wall at the back. So here we go, this is the, the clay wall that I was talking about to kind of round this area out. Now, I'm not too sure I really like this too much. I'm thinking that I might have to do some form of a gradient with it. So even maybe starting the clay here and kind of building it up down across a little bit because this kind of here contrasts just a lot too much i think 
So yeah, I might want to yeah run the clay from the top down a little bit. And considering I'm already going to be running clay down to kind of here along the sides because of all of the sand that I want to remove, I could definitely just kind of continue that trend on and kind of arc it down so this clay doesn't feel quite so out of place. The other thing I'm thinking I might want to do as well is that once I put a little bit of a dome on top of this, I might even come back in here and have a bit of a lava fall coming down this side because of course this here is the front of the portal because you came in through the doorway at the back here originally so that section there is the front of that portal so every time you come home you come back to the front facing to the back of the island so if I put a little bit of a, a small lava flow down here maybe even a lava pool in the bottom I could end up with a really nice looking thing every time I return from an adventure or anything like that. So I think that's what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to end up uh, putting a lava flow down this wall. Also that just kind of breaks up all of this clay texture that we've got going on because it is a lot of clay let's be honest. Now out through the back here I had to remove a whole lot of my furnaces and things because they were in the way. They were all in through this area here that we've now got this clay wall in. So all of those furnaces are now removed and in my rucksack and they're gonna be probably destroyed actually because once we build a proper crafting room, I wanna change up the furnaces they have so that they are kind of more on theme because I'm going for like a, a, you know, a natural kind of feel and lots of dark and gloomy and red. And of course I can't do red furnaces, but I can do uh, blindstone furnaces, so I'll probably end up with a room full of blindstone furnaces, and I'll probably also do like blindstone and crimsonite forges and things when I move into my new area. So like I said, that's going to probably be in through here. What I'm going to do at some point very soon is I'm going to dig in under here and count my way out this way, kind of drop down under the floor and just count out and see how far out from this wall I can get. That will give me a bit of an idea as to how far I can actually go with all of this stuff and how big a room that I can build. So obviously the top layer goes all the way up to the volcano edge out here which is something like 20 plus blocks but of course the island underneath this clay, plat clay pad actually slopes quite considerably so I don't have all that room to play with unfortunately. Now, once again, I was thinking about um, changing this area up and kind of putting a, a lava top in here. But, I mean, look at this place. This place is pretty awesome. I mean, if you stand back here, the lighting effects in here are really, really cool, especially as the day turns into night and turns back again. You get some really cool kind of haloing lighting effects. But, I don't know, as much as I like that, I think having this actually look like a volcano from everywhere is probably better and I mean the other thing is that this map is still kind of annoying me I want that colored in and covered in red so I'll end up going up there at some point probably in a little while and filling this entire area up here with rust wood so the way I think that that's going to work is I'm just going to come down to this level here and then just build a couple of little domes and dishes in here so it kind of domes down a little bit. I might even end up throwing a few um, light sources up there as well just for you know a few, bit of smoke and stuff like that coming up through the rust wood. I think that will look pretty cool. In fact I'm going to grab some rust wood up and have a look at starting on something like that right now. So I may have overestimated how much rust wood this is going to take. That one ring up there Oh, well, it's a, a three layer thick ring at this point in time, but that up there took up over 150 rust wood because I started out with over a thousand and I'm now down to 850 rust wood. So that's a lot. And as you can see by the map, that's actually not done anything to the map at all. This is just all of the stuff around the um, outside. It's still protected from the sky by the top of the volcano. So, at the end of the day here, I might actually end up having to go and get a whole lot more rustwood. I might have to empty my inventory out again and go and get some more rustwood from 
the hub. But of course, if that's the case, then this part of this project is not going to get done today because I am already actually running out of time. My time is quite limited this week, mostly just because I've been sick, but also because I've started a new job and a whole bunch of other things are going on. So, unfortunately, it's not quite the best time for me to uh, be playing lots and lots of Sky Saga, but these things happen, and I mean, I will end up playing a lot more Sky Saga uh, very soon, because of course, with Alpha 5 coming out, you can absolutely bet that I'll be playing a whole, whole bunch of Sky Saga as soon as that happens. So, yeah, anyway, I'm going to keep going here. I'm going to put down the next layer. So the next layer is going to be down one. I might even spread this top ring out a little bit and just have the pool right in the middle as a kind of dip down in the the blocks that I'm building up here. I don't want this completely flat, but I also don't want a huge, huge bowl in here either. So yeah, I think that's the idea, is to maybe go out one more layer and then dip in, and then we can go from there. So the dipping design really doesn't go all that well, especially not on the minimap. As you can see, this circle is coming out to be quite, quite square here. And the main reason for that is that I'm just not using a circle generator when I'm doing this. I'm basically just like counting four blocks in or three blocks in or however long I want my ring in to be and then just placing that many blocks down. And of course, as you get closer and closer, you can't keep using the same block combinations. The actual circle size and shape changes, which means that it gets very, very complicated and very messy to have rings of this type of system, unless of course you're doing something where you've got the outer ring calculated and the inner ring calculated off a, a circle generator or, or whatever you want to use. And then you build both of those things and fill the gap between them. But I just don't have time to do that and I honestly am starting to doubt how much better it's going to make it look by having this very very gradual dip so just for now i'm actually just going to fill out this entire area in here with the remaining rustwood i'm not sure if i'm even going to have enough i should but i'm not 100 percent sure and i didn't actually check if i can buy rustwood at the store today because that of course would be a bit of a crimp in the plan if i can't go out and buy more rustwood when i need it um but I think we'll have enough. I think we can get this all done. And then next episode, I'll come back up here and change this up a little bit more and actually make it a little look a little bit more like lava. So potentially put some more blind stone into it, maybe some gold. I might even see if I can scrounge up a little bit more crimsonite or even farm up a little bit more crimsonite so that I can kind of run some veins of crimsonite through this stuff and make it look a little bit better. And then, of course, you can also... Do the same old trick that I've been doing with all of my lava everywhere else and throw some rust wood brazes and that type of stuff underneath it and then get a really cool smoking effect. So I've just been uh, watching Trisha's stream from Alpha 5 and there's some really really cool things coming up but in particular the smoke and lighting effects seem to have improved a great deal. So coming up into Alpha 5, this type of effect might actually be worth reproducing because the smoke is not going to be quite as, well, smoky as this. They're actually going to get kind of more of a heat vapor fuzz coming off of lights and things like that. I've only really seen the, blo uh, the bone lamps in her stream, but they gave off a really cool, like, heat effect that would actually penetrate through a single block like this. So I'm definitely going to come back and do something Maybe another lava type build, maybe another wastelands type build. I've got a few ideas going back and forth um, in my head at the moment. So during Alpha 5 pre-release, when I'm not allowed to actually produce videos, I'm going to try out a few of these different ideas and see what I can come up with and see what's going to be the most fun and the best for you guys to actually watch as I go through the next Alpha and build up a brand new home island. Um, and then yeah, we're gonna work on that one together. Next time round, I'm not sure if I'm actually gonna keep doing uh, the Sheep Ball Home Island. I definitely want to go onto the Sheep Ball Island next time round and start up 
sheep ball again and actually get sheep ball up and running because I've been a little bit too busy this alpha period to actually have sheep ball matches but hopefully come alpha 5 we'll start playing a little bit more sheep ball on home islands and stuff like that so I'll go in and I'll build up a couple of arenas and that will be you know maybe the first episode or the first couple of episodes in the Alpha 5 season. But after that, I'm going to go over to my home island and I'm going to spend all of my time building really massive and incredible home islands, hopefully. Because, as you can see, this place has a lot of potential, but I just don't have the time to fill in all of this kind of clay area down the bottom here. Originally, the plan was to put some kind of uh, orc encampment or something along those lines in underneath this volcano around the edges but yeah like I said it's just it's not gonna have I'm not gonna have enough time to get it all done before the alpha gets wiped I was lucky to get my volcano and my iron giants in place so this is admittedly a little bit ugly uh, but it does the job for now and if we have a look on the mini map you can see that now the volcano actually look like looks like it has lava in it which is amazing that's exactly what I wanted from this and that's exactly why I'm doing this as well so of course we're gonna to have to go back down inside there and have a bit of a look from the bottom in a sec because this is going to have drastically changed how the bottom looks and how the lighting and stuff works down there as well because we've cut off pretty much all the lighting down to the bottom area so that portal room is now going to be dark and gloomy oh yeah so I'm gonna to have to go down and put some Phrases and torches and all sorts of stuff around down in there just to get a bit of light back down there. Okay, so I'll meet you back down at the ground level. So we really have absolutely no light down here at all. Like these couple of torches that got left over from the last build are all that is down here. So if I have a look up, you can see I can't really see anything and all I have is just the leftover light from where all of the fire pits and all of that kind of stuff have gone into the lava flow. I really like this effect and what I think I might even do is I'm going to make up some rustwood torches and stick them down around the bottom here and put some brazes in the floor and you know get that kind of fire aspect stuff going that we've got going on through our tunnels and then I'm going to put up a few more brazes and things up in amongst the actual volcano itself or maybe even just a couple of torches so that we get this kind of effect on all sides so you actually feel like you're inside the volcano while you're in here. So I think that might be the best idea. Of course, from this point on I'm definitely going to have to be uh, editing this YouTube video quite heavily so that you guys can actually even see what I'm talking about because YouTube is going to darken this right up. I mean it is really really dark in here but you are not going to be able to see a whole lot once this thing is finished. So I'm going to, yeah, keep going, keep uh, tinkering with the lighting setup around here, and then hopefully we can come back together when I've got something kind of impressive to look at. Wow. This might be all this portal room really needs. Look at that. So this is just floor braziers and fire pits in underneath the floor. Just one block down, and then of course there are four rustwood torches at the very top here. Now if I kind of wander around this thing you can see oh just how awesome this thing looks and of course given sky saga's of nighttime effects it kind of puts these little dots all over the place you end up with a really cool effect and hey now we're getting the sun rising outside and you can just see little bits and pieces in here oh i really like this a lot this like i said this may be all i really need to do with this thing now I can see a little bit of light coming in through the side here, that's from a torch in behind the clay wall. So if I remove that torch, it'll probably sort itself out pretty nicely. And of course, the view from actually inside this cave here, it's going to look pretty awesome as well. So yeah, it's lots of, lots of red and lots of smoke, and I really like that. So the other thing I might actually do in here as well is still run that lava fall down the back I think just give that a nice you know other focal point and I might even get it a little bit higher and run just a couple of stripes of lava or something with a bit of lighting in behind them so you can see that and just to kind of accent this guy up a bit and like I said I am gonna to have to edit this footage a little bit because it is going to be quite 
quite dark on the YouTube render, but definitely liking where this is going right now. And I think I'm actually kind of finally happy with this room. So if I get back down off the spring, spring trap that I just hit. So as you can see, this is the entranceway. So here's our little cave. So if I swing back around, you enter in through this way and find the portal in this mist of haze and then it's also kind of got this very very subtle backdrop now once again I'm not sure how well this is going to come through on YouTube but if you add me in game I have the same in-game name as my YouTube channel and drop by and have a look this back wall here I think looks absolutely amazing so if I kind of swing around past this back wall different sections of the wall get lit up and basically how I kind of see it is it gives a little bit of like a, almost a lighting lava fall effect. So basically this is just, if I flick my torch back here, we've just got clay and a little bit of rust wood here and there. And then we've got some torches in behind. And so the torches are illuminating this side, but it's also catching all of these little swirls that are going up and down in this clay as well. So when I take the, the torch away, as I look up and down, you can kind of see some of these swirls, and then as I move side to side, you get the, the very thick strips of red where you're getting all of the light bouncing off of the edges of these blocks. So, I really like that. I hope, I really, really hope that this comes up really well on YouTube, and if it doesn't, then yeah, like I said, add me in-game and come and check this place out, because I am really, really loving the way this has gone so far. So the other thing that has happened, of course, is that I am now definitely going to need to get rid of those ground wood braces and things that are up in this lava flow. Because the biggest problem that I have here is now I'm going to get ground wood to come up in all of this smoke, which, while it doesn't look too bad, it takes away from the overall effect of the room. So yeah, if I kind of move around here, like I said, you can see the, the portal and then you get this lava effect going on at the background and it's only very subtle like it's not a, a very strong effect or anything like that and that's perfect I didn't really want a strong color at the back I just wanted a slight subtle detail to um, add just you know a little bit of extra background to this guy so I think that's realistically all I have time for for today uh, between this episode and next episode I want to kind of carve my way in through the side here and start building up my crafting area and my storage area and then just for balance sake of course I will carve out through the other side here and create a little jail but as with this cave here I'm gonna do some very very subtle lighting so that it doesn't take away from the overall effect of the area and I'm gonna pick that torch back up again because I really really like this effect so I'm just gonna sit here and marvel at this thing for a little while Oh, look at that. It looks even cooler in the daytime as well. And you can see, so I haven't actually filled this entire ring up completely. I've only done that section in behind. But once again, I'm not sure how much of this you're going to be able to see on the YouTube render. So I'm going to leave it at that for today. I, I'm sorry this one's been a little bit of a shorter episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. I have really loved messing around with the lighting styles here in Sky Saga. I'm really, really keen for Sky Saga Alpha 5, so make sure you subscribe to my channel and watch as Alpha 5 rolls in. I'll be doing all of the usual things, lots of tutorials, lots of Let's Plays, and keeping all of this stuff going in with all of the new bits and pieces that happen with Sky Saga Alpha 5. So I'll see you all next time.